guidance for that ago. We'll be moving quickly into our second speech for the day. And the person giving this speech is someone I always look for in the person of Toastmaster Bill Baker. He has given his has given a speech. I would like to call I would like to call on the evaluator please to tell us the expectations um, for the speech. This is from the CC or for the event. Okay. Uh, Bill's <coughs> doing his first presentation from the advanced speaker manual titled Entertaining Speech. Speaker. Uh, the first assignment is for him to present a personal story that's entertained to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, to Sponsor like Bill Baker, have you changed your underwear lately? To Sponsor Bill Baker. Well, have you? <laughs> yes. Have you changed yes. your underwear lately? Yes. <laughs> That's good. I'm sure the person sitting near you really hopes that you have. <laughs> but why is it important for us to change our underwear? Because it gets dirty and it starts to stink. And that stench will actually make it harder for you to get the things you want out of life. For example, it's hard to get that promotion at work when your underwear is stinking. <laughs> Now, most of you change your underwear every day. Most of you. Uh, <laughs> and that's good. That's good. We need to change our underwear every day. But some people have find it very difficult to change one thing. And even though this one thing stinks, they'll continue to use it. Do you know what it is? I think. Mm -hmm. I think. Many people habitually think and believe thoughts about themselves that stink. And they are of no benefit. Thoughts like, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm so stupid. So thoughts like that and other negative thoughts have a name. They call stinking thinking. Stinking thinking. Stinking thinking needs to be changed as fast as you change four-day-old underwear. Because just like dirty underwear, stinking thinking will also make it hard for you to get the things you want. But how does thinking thinking start? Well, many scientists and behavioral experts agree that negative thoughts are implanted in our subconscious mind when we're very young. Teachers, parents, and others will innocently say things like this to a child. Oh, sweetie, you're just not good in math. Or, baby, why are you so clumsy? And experts agree that children have a natural bias to believe what they're told about themselves. So that child will grow up with those negative thoughts being replayed over and over in their minds. It's like having a tape recording of negativity inside your head. And what we believe about ourselves has tremendous power over our bodies and our actions. Case in point. Tony Robbins, in his book, Unlimited Power, cites the case of a psychiatric patient who had a split personality. Now, one of her personalities was non-diabetic, but the other personality was diabetic. Now, when she was in her non-diabetic personality, her blood sugars were normal. But when she shifted into her diabetic personality, her blood sugars actually rose. And all the medical evidence showed that she was diabetic. And then when she shifted back 
to a non-diabetic personality, our blood sugars went down too. What we believe about ourselves has tremendous power over our bodies and our actions. Train the mind and the body will follow. But how would you know if you suffer from stinking thinking? Well, usually someone has to point it out to you. It's similar with the person who's wearing the stinky underwear. They probably won't notice it because they've gotten used to the smell. Usually someone has to do something like this. Hey, hey man, hey, hey, come in, come in. You stink. Have you changed your underwear lately? Well, it's similar with the person who's suffering from stinking thinking. They may not notice the stinking thinking because they've gotten used to thinking it. That happened to me. No, not the stinky underwear. <laughs> <laughs> My thinking was stinking. And I didn't even know it. You see, I was a member of a cult. My mother was a member of this cult. And from infancy, the cult's teachings were inculcated into my mind every day. And for the next 46 years, I was a very active member of this cult. Well, one day I read a book written by a former high-ranking member of the cult, and he brilliantly outlined the evidence that the cult was not teaching the truth. Well, that was the same as him pulling me to the side and saying, hey, Bill, you're thinking the state. I woke up. Then I decided to do the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I decided to leave the cult. Now what made it so difficult is that I had to break free from the imaginary shackles that they had on my mind. But with the help of former cult members, I finally changed my thinking and I left. I trained my mind and my body to follow. Did you notice what gave me the strength to leave the cult? I said it twice, only two words. I said, I decide. I decided are two of the most powerful words in existence because when a person decides, they make up their mind, they commit to doing something, that's where the power is. That's when the magic happens. Because remember, what we believe has tremendous power over our bodies and our actions. So the next time you're changing your underwear, and we hope that will be very soon, <laughs> when you're pulling those old drawers down, ask yourself, do I also need to change my stinking thinking? If you do, please remember, you can change how you think. Just decide. Decide that you will no longer entertain in your brain any more stinking thinking. Train your mind, and your body will follow. Toast,